So you guys have got to listen to the radio. Left traffic. Left traffic, just double checking, sir. Here at my combo. If you listen the first time, you wouldn't have to ask me. That ties up the radio. That's what we're talking about today. There's more to the story, and we're going to dive into it and talk about why I think things like this are very dangerous for the aviation community and everybody flying. Anyway, so welcome, boys and girls, back to another episode of the Welcome to the Sky podcast. It's been a while, I understand, but thank you for tuning in on YouTube. Thank you for listening on Spotify. Let's get into it, shall we? This is the Welcome to the Sky podcast, your place for conversations about the best thing in the world, fly. I'm Lou Dix, your host and friend as we talk about everything from flight training, aviation news, how to become a better pilot and much, much more. I've got a lot to say, so sit back, relax and let's get this thing off the ground on the Welcome to the Sky podcast. So here we are again. As I said, it's been a little while since I've done a Welcome to the Sky podcast episode, but if you're a long time viewer of Ludix Aviation, you know exactly what I'm all about. But if you don't know me, my name is Lewis. I'm a flight instructor, CFI, CFII. I'm an ATP, former airline pilot, making aviation videos on YouTube, showing the fun side of aviation, the fun side of flight training, how flight training uh, can be fun, all the while making sure you're maintaining high standards of, uh, of safety and performance. That's, that's basically it in a nutshell. I highlight a lot of the time the the lighter parts of flying, having fun and, and kind of making aviation fun, but also I, I, I show some struggles that students go through, which are very relatable to everybody going through flight training. So um, unfortunately, instead of highlighting the positive today, I'm highlighting a negative part of what we do. You know, in flight training as a flight instructor, I see students struggle with many, many different things. Learning how to land is a big one that people struggle with. Getting through fears like the fear of stalling an aircraft, that's a big one. Another massive fear is of air traffic control. And that is one of the things that we're going to talk about today um, because of what I just experienced today with a student of mine. So I was actually doing a checkout flight in a 172. We went into that video with high spirits very positive we're having a great time and then all this happened which we're going to get into now so basically to give you a backstory there is a air traffic controller at the Kissimmee airport that i've made mention about in previous videos back Lift deck off runway 24, uh, on course to the west, uh, I believe, 670 Mac off. <laughs> he seems to mumble and slur his words over the frequency a lot of the time. You know, a lot of the stuff that he does say you can understand, but there's a lot of it that is, you just can't understand it at all. And uh, you'll you'll hear that. So to, to just get started, I'm just going to go back and forth between what happened in the flight and kind of talk you through what's, uh, what's happening and, and my thoughts as we go. But it started... <laughs> On the first call, like, would uh, just listen. Thank you, Tower. Skyhawk 670 Mike Alpha over San Pete, same bound for touch and goes with uh, information in Quebec. 670 Mike Alpha, Semi Tower, Port of Beam, Warren Tower for left down one time. I'm just going to stop out that, that right there. You may have understood that, you may not have understood that. Just to replay that again, what he said. 670 Mike Alpha, Semi Tower, Port of Beam, Warren Tower for left down one time. You hear that slur in the middle of that. Now, knowing, uh, no, having flown in this area for, for quite some time, I understand that, which is report the uh, water towers. But my student, Juan, didn't understand what he says. So what do you do if you don't understand? Do you, do you just read back an ATC call just for the hell of it? Or if you don't understand it, do you try and clarify? I think the answer is obvious. Now, you're going to hear the, what the controller does here. 670, my guy with semi-tower, put a beam water tower for left down one one time. That again for six here, Mike Alpha. This little smile from me here is because I know exactly what's about to happen. That's a six seven zero, Mike Alpha. Report a beam the water tower for a left down one one five. Report a beam the water tower for a left down one one five six zero, Mike Alpha. You heard the tone of the controller completely change. Now he did slow it down, which we're very very thankful for, which is what he should have done in the first place. But the tone in which he responded now sets a mood 
for the traffic pattern that we're about to go and fly. It sets a tone of anger and it uh, kind of disconnects the pilots from the controllers, which uh, y you don't want that, do you? Because we're supposed to work together to keep the airspace safe and keep us flying safe. So just... just uh, 670, my God, a report a beam the water tower for a left down one to one five. Just so pissed off that we asked him to repeat what he said. Just sets a really bad precedent for, for uh, you know, if we miss a radio call in the future while we're in the traffic pattern here, are we able to ask him to say it again? Uh, is he going to get even more pissed off? We don't know. It, it kind of deters us now from asking the question. So if we, we misunderstand something, now that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but if you're a student pilot coming into this airport, and I'm going to reiterate this a few times over this, this episode. If you're a student pilot and you're getting spoken to like that by ATC, are you going to want to call them back and ask questions? Absolutely not. And that's where the danger comes in. Now, not only that, the controller has given us an incorrect pattern entry. Kind of. So we're using 1.5 in Kissimmee today. And if we would have followed the ATC instruction there, he said left downwind for runway 1.5, which would mean that we would have to fly over the airport to then enter the left downwind for runway 1.5. So that's a mistake because that's, that's not a normal entry procedure into this airport. We're all human, right? We didn't understand what the air traffic controller said, so we had to ask for clarification. He's made a mistake here, which he's going to correct himself on, which you'll see right now. Report being a water tower for a left down 115, 6 here of my Gava. My Gava, make that a right down 115. Uh, there we go. Right down wind, uh, 15, 0 my Gava. Alright, so this guy is the guy that I call Mumbles McGee, because he mumbles everything and then gets pissed off at you when you don't understand what he says. That's incredible, man. It is incredible because we are all human beings at the end of the day and we're supposed to be working together to keep the airspace safe. Uh, I just feel like bringing that tone into the conversation that you're having is completely unnecessary and can be a detriment to safety for that exact reason that I just told you. If you're a student pilot or somebody that's not confident on a radio, you're not going to gain confidence by somebody berating you for just simply asking to say it again. This is just the beginning. I like to debrief things. I like to uh, I like to address things as they happen and kind of really understand the situations and see if the student actually understands the situation. If you look at Juan, what he just said there, he understood what the controller was asking him about the, the left downwind, uh, which in our minds wasn't a normal procedure. So he understood what was going on. He understood what was being asked of him. He's just looking for clarification on both what he said at first, because that first thing was mumbled, and then clarification on... Uh, the, the kind of downwind situation, which in fairness, the controller corrected himself. But again, we're all human. The controller made an error. Uh, you know, we're not getting pissed off because the controller made an error, you know? Anyway, that's just the start of it, boys and girls, seriously. Pacific Tower, sir, keep the map on that uniform, confirming left, turn up, correct? And I uniform, affirmative, left traffic. Left traffic, sir, keep the map on uniform, thank you. Like, his tone with people is not nice. So now, if you're watching on the video podcast, you're actually watching uh, us land the aircraft at the moment. Uh, if you're listening, you're not going to see this, but Juan does a beautiful, beautiful touchdown there. Very, very nice touchdown. Well, that was nice. Heck, sir. And then, of course, you think about the situation. The controller gave us pretty shoddy radio calls at, uh, at the beginning of this interaction. Cleared us for a touch and go. We've done the touch and go. Now... After all of that, Juan wants clarification. He's going to want clarification on whether to do right or left traffic. We all forget, right? Maybe you should have written it down, okay? But this is the interaction that we get for trying to clarify something. And with this, this is where it gets dangerous. Well, that was nice. Thanks, sir. Ed Tower, it's my five. I'll just to double check. You said left or right down one. So you guys have got to listen to the radio. Left traffic. Left traffic, just double checking, sir. It's here with my Alpha. If you listen the first time, you wouldn't have to ask me. That ties up the radio. They made a mistake a few minutes ago. So you're my guy, <laughs> So, all right. Maybe, maybe I'm in a discussion <laughs> about that over the frequency 
isn't the uh, the best thing to do. The controller is talking about clogging up the frequency, and he's clogged it up now with him having a go at us. And I think Juan handled that perfectly well. Now, now here's the thing: the way that he is speaking to us, or, or Juan, because I'm not saying anything. I'm just sitting there. I'm, I'm an audience at this point. It, it is rude. It's just absolutely rude, and it's absolutely uncalled for to speak to somebody like that who is all the. Juan was doing was asking for clarification on something and I think it sets a very dangerous precedent as an air traffic controller when you are berating somebody for asking for clarification I have never not once in my flying career not once been spoken to like that by a controller for asking for clarification on something do you want left do you want right traffic yes as a controller, you've got a ton of stuff going on. It's the most, one of the most stressful jobs in the world. I completely get it. You, all Juan was doing was asking for clarification on something. Again, just like he did the first time. The first time was because Boom Howard didn't really enunciate what he wanted to say. Uh, this time was just for clarification, and he gets spoken to like that. I, I just think that is incredible. And that's where the danger comes now. And not just student pilots. I know I gave the student, student pilot example there. But the amount of pilots in general, especially new pilots, that are scared of air traffic control, that maybe you've done all your training at an uncontrolled field and you want to go and get used to talking to uh, an air traffic controller, you go to a towered field or something like that, and this is your first interaction with air traffic control. I, I, you know, it doesn't help the relationship between pilots and air traffic controllers. It just further disconnects those two groups from each other when in reality pilots and controllers are supposed to be working together to keep our skies safe i just think it's such a, a detriment to aviation which is why i wanted to kind of highlight it it's a real uh knock of confidence because up to this point in the flight juan and i have been having a great time in the video for the in the checkout video you see we're having fun we're, get, we're getting through what we need to get through and and doing some things really well some things needed some work and we we went through it together but regardless of anything else we had fun while we were doing it and you'll see for the rest of the clips that i'm going to show you from this part of the flight you can see that basically if you're watching the uh the video podcast we're flying around like straight face no no fun all the fun has now been sucked out of this flight because we are both just trying to first understand why we would be berated for trying to clarify an instruction that we were given wrong in the first place anyway so of course it's going to cause confusion no we're all human right right, just down, down, right. Gonna uh, you, you know, you, you're not even making a mistake you're asking a question before you made a mistake. Now, for the rest of this flight, I had noticed Juan's mood changed completely. There was definitely a shift in the mood in the cockpit. And I noticed that he wasn't really fully focused on the stuff that I was talking to him about uh, regarding the flight and regarding what we were going to do. And so I, I, I did this. Mississippi Tower, Skyhawk number 120, so it's past the sand pits with information Quebec inbound for touch and go and short approach of able. One, two, three, there's three people in a pattern, so you're not going to get short approaches, but enter the uh, port of being water tower for the right down with one five. Well, you make port him a water tower a 360 a right, or something, uh, dude. Traffic for one five, one, two, three, alpha. Let's do this one, and then we'll call it a day after after this. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with this guy. Yeah. Uh, and look at that. The air traffic controller has managed to knock Juan's not so much you know his, his confidence of flying but his confidence in this particular traffic pattern and has made him not want to be in the sky now I know that is not as important as you know keeping the skies safe and stuff like that but I think it really is we we get into aviation to have fun to have a good time to do something that we love we don't get into aviation to be shouted at by doing something that's logical. Uh, and that's the thing that gets me about all of this is that Juan's questions and, and Juan's attempt to clarify something is a logical thing. The only thing that's completely illogical about this whole thing is the way that, in which this uh, controller reacted. One thing that Juan actually said to me at the end of the flight as we were going into park was that he his focus had shifted now from flying to now worrying about air traffic control and that's where it becomes a major problem i just go back to it and just the one of the biggest things that student pilots fear is air traffic control 
And I can only imagine if you're a student pilot and you've been subjected to this by an air traffic controller. I know it happens a lot. People get stressed out. People are human. It's absolutely normal. But in this situation, it just absolutely wasn't necessary. And it's it's made things difficult and it's made things unsafe. Because now, as a student pilot, if you're in that traffic pattern and you've asked the question and you're getting shouted at by ATC, you will then think twice about keying up the mic and asking an important question that could save a life. Imagine, imagine if Juan didn't ask that question. And in Juan's mind, he was like, this is right traffic. It's right traffic, right traffic. How many times can you say right traffic? I'll say it again, right traffic. And he went right traffic. And the controller then has to key up the mic and clog up the frequency by telling Juan that he's done the wrong thing. What kind of a situation are we in there? We might be running into other aircraft, might have a mid-air collision. We, I don't know, may have to make a jet go around, which for air traffic controls, that's the worst thing in the world. And the pilots as well. (laughs) I've listened to many an ATC exchange for jets having to go around airports and stuff. They don't like it. There's just so many other things that that could affect, which also affects safety. So because of this interaction making us and making whatever pilot think twice about asking very very crucial safety related questions i just think is a complete detriment to flying in general i wanted to highlight this to kind of show that not everything's perfect when you go and fly but the message that i want to get across is that even so even if the controller is getting pissed off at you stand your ground because just just like Juan stood his ground, he made sure to ask the questions regardless of this guy being pissed off. And even when he got scolded by this guy. So you guys have got to listen to the radio. Left traffic. Left traffic, just double checking, sir. It's here with my Alpha. Sir, if you listened the first time, you wouldn't have to ask me. That ties up the radio. It did make a mistake a few minutes ago. It's here with my Alpha. <laughs> he stood his ground. He let Boomhauer know that he also made a mistake earlier. And I'm not having it that Juan made a mistake. That's not a mistake. I, I, I refuse and I will back my students every single time when they ask a question related to safety. I will back them 100% of the time. Okay, didn't write it down. Should have maybe written it down. Okay, again, we're all human. We all make mistakes. But I will back 100% of the time a safety related question. But here is the message, the final message of this little podcast episode here. If you are a pilot in training, if you are a fully fledged pilot, no matter how experienced you are, always, always, if in doubt, ask. I don't care if it pisses off a controller that they have to make one more radio call out of the day to tell you something that maybe they've already told you a couple of minutes prior. I don't care. I don't care. If I'm unsure, I'm asking the question. I am not going to go right traffic because I was too scared to ask which way I should go and I ended up going the wrong way. That's that's not the way that we operate. You know, we can always look at ourselves and we can always improve ourselves and, and think about what could we have done better. Maybe Juan could have written it down, should have written it down. He's got his iPad in front of him. So writing down the instructions there and then. But given the interaction with this controller as a whole, with the slurring, with the wrong instructions at first, it would be very, very easy to confuse some things. Um, Maybe that's, you know, giving too much of an excuse because again, we should be writing things down. It's the the whole point that we, we fly with a pen. But yeah, if you are a student pilot and you are scared of air traffic control, don't let things like this deter you from making a radio call for safety's sake, if you need to ask a question, if you need assistance, if you need whatever, air traffic control is there to help pilots. Pilots are not there just to annoy air traffic controllers. As much as some air traffic controllers will tell you that's the case, that is absolutely not the case. They are there to help us and we are there to work together. That's why I really, really recommend if your local tower is doing tower tours, go and meet your air traffic controllers. Put a face to the voice and make it human. You will build a connection between pilots and controllers and maybe, just maybe, things like this wouldn't happen. 
this shouldn't have happened. At the end of the day, all we can do is learn from our mistakes and live to fly another day. And that's all I've got to say about it. Thank you so much for being patient with the Welcome to the Sky podcast. Finally been able to get something else out. Um, so yeah, thank you. If you've enjoyed this video on YouTube, please leave a comment letting me know. It helps the algorithm. And let me know if you've had any similar experiences. I know there's plenty of other airports around Florida, at least, that have uh, controllers that are not the friendliest, Vero Beach. Um, thank you for listening on Spotify. If, if you've been listening there, show some love on Spotify. Also, Apple Podcasts is on there as well. So appreciate you. And uh, don't do a boom house.